know that uh, whether you're single or married here tonight, you can remember a place where you were, well, I'd like to say that little, uh, if you have an apple, you know that little icon, the apple, it's called search mode, right? You're in search mode, just where's my helper comparable, right? And for some of us, we got in a lot of trouble in that search mode <laughs> because we thought that helper was comparable and they weren't. The Lord goes on to say, out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle and the birds of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. <laughs> I know some of you ladies are going, my husband's still sleeping. He's still, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, let's have fun tonight, right? As Adam was taking his nap on his lazy boy with his remote control, I guess, the Lord took one of his ribs <laughs> oh, and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into woman. And he brought her to the man. And he said to Adam, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. What an amazing story. I can say for sure, God picked my spouse for me. And I know after 30 years, I go, God, I didn't get a giraffe or a bear or a whale. I got, I got the perfect wife for me, right? I mean, we want God's pick, right on? And see, here's the thing. If you're married, I want you to know that's God's pick for you. See, you might be going, see, he's, he's given me a license to divorce this nag sitting next to me. He, he's given me a license to divorce this waste of space next to me that won't even get a job. No, if you're married, there you go. Boom. God's choice. God wants you to work it out, right? I've been thinking about this whole institution of marriage that remember God created we just read it God made it right and what makes it successful see now some of you here if you're married you're going please tell me the secret I want to know and if you're single here coming from a divorced home with your parents and let's face it most of your friends are divorced too right you're going I need to know the secret I want, I got good news for you. There really is a key. I got it figured out. <laughs> no, I can't give myself that much credit. The truth of it is God's word gives us all the wisdom we need. It really does. And, and we just read it. There was a call to leave and to cleave. Right? What do you think that we're supposed to leave? Because we have to leave before we can cleave, right? See, the thing is, when we get married, many times we cleave, but we don't leave. We don't let go of the old life and the old attachments and the things and the expectations. And but really what it comes down to more than that, you ready? We don't leave us. 
We don't leave ourselves. See, I've heard teachings that say that the, in, the problem with marriage today is, is we have attachments, soul attachments with other people before we get married, whether it was because we fornicated, we had sex before marriage, or we gave our heart away in some way, or, and, and somehow we've carried that into this relationship, and now it's polygamous, and it's unhealthy, it's idolatrous, and, and God's not blessing it. And, and I'm not, not trying to say there's not any truth to that, but again, that's all symptomatic. There's a much deeper issue about what that leaving is about. And as I was praying about this today, going, Lord, what's the deal? What, what kind of word would you want to share with us that would give insight that would, whether you're single or whether you're married, to understand the beauty of marriage, which you intended us to enjoy, right? Can I share it with you? I believe that it's found, and as Charles Spurgeon put it, John 17, the holy of holies of prayer, where Jesus was praying. And I want you to listen to the words. Jesus is praying, and he spoke and lifted up these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven. And he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may also glorify you. And you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth, and I have finished the work with which you have given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world began. Wow, so Jesus is praying, and he's saying, Life is found not so much in marriage, but it's in knowing you, right? It's in knowing you, and it gets really deep. He, he says, now restore me to the glory I had with you before the world began. Anybody know what that glory is? Remember when Jesus was walking in the garden? The Lord God was walking in the garden? Like Christophany or theophany according to your theology but it's it was the pre-incarnate christ in all glory walking in the garden in other words before the world began there was a glory that jesus had with the father you ready a oneness that was there now when he left heaven to come to earth he left that he lowered himself and became a man so there was something he was losing in that oneness, that fellowship. It wasn't quite the same. And Jesus is saying, I, now restore me to that gl glory. It's, he goes on to talk about what glory, about oneness with the Father, right? Now, now I'm going to like be like a, a ping pong game here. It's, you know, you know those, those pinball machines where it's kind of going back and forth. But it's going to make sense here in a minute, trust me. The Apostle Paul says that marriage is a picture, right, of Christ in the church. It's a shadow. It's really not about marriage. It's because it's in heaven, you know, you'll be closer to a brother or sister in Christ that you don't know on earth right now in heaven than you are your own spouse right now on earth. For real. M marriage is just a, a temporal thing. It's a gospel track on planet earth. It really is. It's a gospel track for unbelievers to see and go, that's what the gospel is. What is it? Where two become one. Now, how does that happen? Jesus showed us. He came down and he left. What did he leave? Think about it. What did he leave? In a sense, yes and no, one is for the Father, in a sense, yeah, because he's saying, but there was a certain connection that was there, but G, what Jesus, here's the thing, he left heaven, and he came to earth, and he came to represent not himself, but the Father, right? 
I have not come to do my will. Father, the words I speak are not my own, but the very words from the Father. So it wasn't about him. He left. It, it, when you, two people get married, where they go, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's about him. See, when you're single, it's like, it's what I want. And when you get married, you keep that up and you won't be married long. Right? How about getting saved? I, think about it. Parallel that. If I get saved and, it, and it's like, I don't want to go to hell, so I'm going to get be a Christian and I'm going to mix in what I want with what God wants. How does that work out for you? Not good at all, right? You become one of those lukewarm Christians. But when you get saved and you leave completely, you're dead. It's just like... It's not about what I want. It's not what about what I feel. It's not what I prefer. It's not about what I was raised to believe or what's comfortable for me or my desires. That's all gone completely. And you get two people that do that and they make it all about the Father like Jesus did, our bridegroom, when he paved the way and he showed. You do that, you get a marriage that is holy. It's whole and it's holy. But we don't have that today in marriages in the church. Isn't that crazy? How ironic, marriages in the church. Isn't it amazing to me that the divorce rate in the church is really the same as it is in the world? And, and you go, we should know better. So that probably means that we're, we've cleaved, but we never really did leave. What did we not leave? Ourselves. We brought ourselves into the institution of marriage. See, if you're single here and you're going, man, I mean, if you're single here and you're going, I'm single and I am really looking forward to getting married, just raise your hand and keep your hand raised high. Now, if you're around these people, lay hands and pray over them right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can't put your hand down. Okay. <laughs> Remember what I said at the beginning, I love marriage? Okay. So here's the thing. You have no idea what you're raising your hand saying, I want. I, I, that's not meant to be an insult. Neither did we who were married, right? Because if we did, we would have run. If we knew what it meant having kids, we would have run. Ignorance is bliss. Hallelujah. Now, I, I'm not saying that to... to be a mockery of those. They're, they're beautiful. I'm just glad it doesn't give me more than I can handle, even in knowledge and understanding and revelation, because it'd, be, it'd just be too much for me. I don't have the faith I need. He gives me what I have faith for. And so, believe me, you don't know what you're asking for. And so, but the desire in of itself is good. It, it's, to desire a spouse is a good thing, the Bible says. It's a wonderful thing. I, I, I can't think of anything that's caused me to grow more in my faith in Jesus is the institution of marriage and parenting. Those two, I'm telling you, it's just stretched me and taken me places I never would have raised my hand and say, Father, take me there. It gave me no choice. Well, I mean, there's always a choice. You leave, you divorce, you run out on your family, and there's those that do that. But a godly man or woman, there's no choice. You just you press on, Right? So if you desire that, it's a good thing. But you have people around going, well, you need to read this book. You need to go to counseling. Reading a book is good. Going to premarital counseling, all those things are good. If you're married here and you're having marital problems, going to counseling is a good thing. And reading a book is good for you too. Mostly reading the book, amen? But I'm telling you, I know lots of people that have premarital counseling and they read the book and they go to counseling and lots of people have marital counseling and they're going to counseling for year after year after year and they still never find victory. Am I right? I've been doing this for over 30 years. Trust me. Trust me. A lot of year after year after year and still it's like banging their head against the wall. Nothing changes. Why? Is it, is it knowledge they lack? It's death that they lack. So here's the thing. I'm going to have to give some little pieces away of Sunday's message here. I've got to do it. You never search for what you already have. Right? You never search for what you already have. But people today are looking for marriage 
They're trying to find something, and you can't find what you're looking for in marriage. We all know one of the most famous lines in Hollywood in the context of marriage. Are you ready? You can bleed me. You did that a little bit too good, Dave. Yeah. Right? But you hear that. It, you know what? Hogwash. Hogwash. That's from the pit of hell. That's a lie. Check it out. The blood of Christ completes me. Right? That's it. I mean, if marriage is a picture of Christ in the church... And if a wound in the side of Adam was given blood and water to give birth to a bride, what did that speak of? Oh, we're getting, this is getting good now, isn't it? Come on, come on, you know it is. Right from the beginning in the garden, it was a picture of Calvary. Right there. How, how many of you thought of that when you go blood and water coming out of the side of the second Adam to give birth to a bride? How many of you think of that when you read Genesis 2? Right? Should have had a V8. You just, boom. You know what? I didn't think of that. It's right there. When you understand that, all of a sudden, marriage takes a whole different mission statement, whole different concept and perception of why I'm married. To borrow a statement from someone, God didn't give us marriage to make us happy, but to make us holy, right? But we get married, oh, you make me so happy. Just wait. That changes. It just does. Because if they can make you happy, they can make you unhappy. <laughs> it's just what happens. You're right, Jake. The single people are loving this. Yeah, you're right. You're right. The single people are like, oh, this is so good. The marriage people are going like this. You know? See, I kind of like this whole circle thing because I really can see you guys well. This is a lot of fun. I think in the new sanctuary building, maybe we should kind of do this. This is kind of neat, you know. <laughs> oh, so good. It's, it's a training ground. It really is. Marriage is training wheels. It's something God's given us to teach us what Jesus said in John. You know, he... He's going, restore me to what I had before. He wasn't looking for a man to do that. A relationship, a woman, a family, a new job, a winning lottery ticket. He was going, real life is knowing the Father. Eternal life is knowing, experiencing, being one with you. Nothing in between us. That's what I'm after. There's nothing that completes me but that alone. See, mankind had that before we both, all of us, we chose to go our own way, right? But the second Adam bleeding out of his side did that to restore us to a previous glory and a greater glory even, you see. Amazing chapter. See, in verse 13, Jesus said, I now come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. Can I read that again? That's just so good. Oh, gosh, I love the Bible. It's so good. Love God's Word, man. Oh, like a kid in a candy store with Scripture, I'm telling you. But that's because of the Holy Spirit. We know that, right? Oh. So he's praying, man, I want to be restored 
to be with you. He goes, now I come to you. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. In other words, I want them to know what it's like to be married. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You want me to know? I mean, you know, we go to, to weddings and, and we watch people walk down the aisle and, and some places they'll do the unity candle, right? You know, they have these little symbols of things. They're just symbols, just like the ring that is just seamless, has no beginning, has no end. There's lots of things we do, just little points of contact and acts of worship acknowledgement of a much deeper eternal truth in the temporal realm of celebration, and, and we're looking at that, but we're just going, wow, that oneness, that's amazing. And, and Jesus says in that kind of oneness, there is a joy, a joy, right? See, when people get married, I, I love it. They walk down the aisle, and you see a joy. You know, I'm, I, I'm just, I can't wait to get together with Vinny and Allie a year after they've been married and just see how things are going and <laughs> see how much, how much joy there is. <laughs> you know, because ain't it the truth? After you get married, I mean, when they get married, it's like, ha, oh, ha, oh, you know. It's just everything's wonderful, new and excitement, euphoric and just mesmerizing, compelling. Just, it's all, wow. Until all of a sudden we found out we completely cleaved. Wait, we didn't completely leave. And now we're arguing who gets the last bit of ice cream, and you're so selfish. And all of a sudden we can't look each other's eyes because that was just, that was mine. Right? It's crazy, isn't it? See, that's, that's, not real, that's not real joy. The kind of joy Jesus is talking about is this true oneness. True oneness. It's, it's like, I completely give my will over to you. I give my will over to you. What, what's left? The will of the Father. It's awesome. Jesus had that in that oneness or marital type of relationship, if you see that oneness. It's... It, because we, we, our minds are so weak, we're so shallow in understanding. We think of marriage, we think many times of it has to be a male, a female, and, and there's sex. In eternal realm, there's a much bigger picture of what marriage means. It's oneness. Oneness. And Jesus wants us to celebrate marriage. Oneness. It's a joy, and it only follows death. The first Adam, it was a type of sleeping. The Bible talks about sleep being death. Whether he actually killed Adam or not, there are some theologians that say so. But sleeping is a type of death. And through the death and the wound comes the life. Calvary, death, wound, comes life. In a marriage relationship, death has to come first. And then oneness follows. And you know what comes? Joy. Joy. I have joy in my marriage. I gotta tell you, I do. Joy. It's just incredible. And I realize it's not because I love her or she loves me, it's because we both so love dad. We just love him. Love him. Love him. I could just bore you to death by repeating myself. Love him. Love the Father. So Trust him. He's so good. I'm not in search mode any longer. I'm not. I'm not searching. I don't, I don't need Kathy to be something or not be something for me for me to be happy. Okay? Don't need that anymore. When people start telling you and saying little things like you complete me or, or the another one I despise as well, hey, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Baloney. That's not true. If you bought into that, that means, my friend, you're still in search mode. And you're not trusting that Father is enough for you. He's not quite enough to fulfill you. So you need the world around you to do things according to the way you want them done. And when they don't, you're going to pretend that you're the Holy Spirit. 
and trying to control it and make it happen. And all that you're doing really is shouting that you're in search mode. And something other than God is your God. The end result, just to follow this through, it's the end of the road is called divorce. In between that place and divorce is lots of fighting, lots of corruption in the family line, adultery, lust, a bad witness for Christ first and foremost, and ultimately doing something that God says in his word he hates. <laughs> All because you wanted to cleave without leaving. Wow. God help us. I just... I want to give God glory right now because let me tell you what, I, I love to boast that I've been married to my wife for 30 years. I love to boast that, that I, I'd die for her and she would for me and all that, but I have to boast in God because it wasn't for him destroying my life. Um, I would be divorced. We would be divorced if it weren't for God. I, I just thank him for that. I think in that he loved me enough to just destroy my life and show me what a Pharisee I was, what a hypocrite I was, how I was cleaving and cleaving. It's called codependence. It's called idolatry. It's called trying to make your spouse your God. I was guilty of all that stuff, and I didn't see it because I didn't understand when I got married what leaving and cleaving really meant. I didn't get it. And I think probably most of us don't, truth be known. That's why we have a history of multiple divorces. And, and if it's not multiple divorces, it's multiple relationships that were like marriages before we got married, which in God's sight, same thing, right? And so we're just a collection of confusion in our soul and incapable of understanding what being one is because we're so busy trying to be one with the three or four or ten previous partners we had before we ever got married, and we got that going on in our head, how can we be one with God when we're trying to be one with the 10 previous partners we were with before we walked down the aisle with somebody? Oh my gosh, we're condemned before we even begin the process of marriage. Because more than half marriages blow it, and the other ones, just because they're staying married doesn't mean they're really married. That means that they might be Catholics in fear and operating in guilt. I know a lot of Catholics today that would love to be divorced, but I can't because I'd rather die a horrible death first. And so they're married out of guilt. And in the Protestants, the same thing. But the bottom line, just because people are legally married doesn't mean that they're really honoring God. Not at all. You know, so we need help today in the church of Jesus Christ. And, and I thought, you know what, why not start here? Why not start here in our church? I think God's been doing some healing in marriages in our church this week. Seriously. I mean, there's been some things going on that's been amazing. But here, here's the good news. You know, I talk about this closet of skeletons and this soul of partners that we've connected to and yoked together and, and clung to. Um, the Holy Spirit can remove that. Praise God. You know, no matter where you're at tonight, the Lord can heal you from that. Uh, it, whether you're single and you're carrying all that baggage in your head and those lies um, where you've tried to make other people God to complete you, make you feel good about you, or whether you're married and, and there's just basically a curse on your marriage. You know, there's strongholds, there's demonic attachments as a result of these idols that you carry and resentment for those idols that didn't fulfill what only God could in your life. That's why you broke up and messed it up, but you're still carrying it like it's yesterday. You can see that removed in a blink of an eye, right? I mean, just like Jesus would like heal somebody, and they, all of a sudden they're blind, they could see, they're deaf, they could hear, they're lame, they could walk, boom. Jesus can heal you like that. I'm not, sometimes it does take counseling, and there's layers of healing that take place. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes, you know, if there's a big garden full of weeds, um, sometimes it takes years to really get all of them removed. God works differently, and there's different story and dynamics with every soul. But I still believe, regardless, that when God comes in the room and he here and he touches you, something significant changes that's dramatic. And, and even if 
all the weeds, all the lies aren't removed right that moment, there's enough where there's this incredible gift called hope for the future. Where it's just like, wow, I know I'm still a work in progress. I know my spouse is, but I actually have the ability to stop looking at their weeds and look at my own. And it's just so liberating. Wow. I, I'm fine with their weeds because they're not my weeds to look at. That's for God to deal with. I'm, my, I'm called to love them in the weeds. And I'm totally free to do that because I got this touch from God because I've decided to die. It's pow- See, that's what happened to me 17 years ago in my marriage. I, I died. It was just dramatic, catastrophic, hideous, horrible, and glorious and beautiful all at the same time. I can't give that to you because only a sovereign father from heaven can bless you with that. But if you hear these words tonight, you go, this is what I want. Then we want to pray over you tonight. I mean, we're a house of prayer. And I know I'm kind of going on a long time tonight, so forgive me for rambling, but there's a passion in my heart about this. I don't know if you picked up on that or not. Because as one of the pastors here, I, I see marriages that are just not experiencing heavenly joy. The, the joy that Jesus has with the Father, he says, I want them to have this, right? You're not experiencing that. And you can with just a simple turning, or a, it's called repenting, doing a 180, just going, I'm going to stop making this about me, and I, I'm really turning away from all the people in my life and things in my life that I tried to complete me and fulfill me when really it's only you, Father. It's only you. And the more that I know that, the more I can love my spouse and be a witness to a world that needs to see marriage as a gospel track. So what I want to do is I want to pray for some marriages tonight, but, but not only marriages. There's also some single folks in here where your head is really whack when it comes to intimacy and relationships, if, if you're honest, right? How many, can we be honest in this room? Right? Let's have, we're going to have some, here we go. Now we're going into the fun zone, kids, okay? <laughs> All right, the fun zone. So here we go. How many of you singles can say, Part of me wants to get married, but part of me, honestly, I have a fear about it because of my experiences, whether it was my parents' marriage, which is a nightmare, or just the whole institutional marriage and all the divorces and things that are going on. I want to, but quite honestly, I'm scared to do it. Or maybe you're even at the point where you're going, no, I don't want to get married, but I would like to want to want to, but I don't, right? If that's, if that's you tonight, just raise your hand out of curiosity. Go, I'm there. Just keep your hand high. Two hands up on, on that person, right? Keep your, keep your hand lifted high. So quite a few of you, right? All right. Now, if you raise your hand, come on up here up front. I want you to stand over here. We're going to pray over you, and then we'll get to the real dysfunctional people who are married. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. Okay, now, now, now I want you to make a circle, a tight circle, a tight circle, okay. Now, how many of you around here would say you have a healthy marriage, it's been through the fire, it's been tested, and you see an anointing moving in your marriage, and, and, and you know that there's one, go ahead, I want you, if you're there, I want you to come stand and stand right where you're at, around the circle. Anybody else? So far, we have one person. There's Judy. There's Mike. Yeah, you, you're definitely you're qualified. I would say 100%. Other, if you're not, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For those of you who don't know, he's a pastor on staff and my son. So, yeah, that's why that was kind of funny. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Before we pray for these folks, I want you to know those that did not raise your hand, um, Thank you for your honesty of going, because just because you didn't raise your hand, couples, it doesn't mean that you're on the verge of divorce. It just means that you know your marriage isn't where it should be, and you have a desire for it to be in a greater place, a healthier place, and we want to address that and pray for you in a moment. So thank you for your honesty in that area. That's awesome. That's, that gives me hope that something's going to happen when we pray for you. Um, so here we have, okay, so focused, all right. 
We've got some single folks around the circle who have lies in their head right now. For those that are standing around the circle right now, you're, you're coming up as a covering over the singles and youth in our body right now, and you're recognizing and saying, wow, there's some strongholds. The enemy has done a number on some of these precious sons and daughters. And there's been lies that have been implanted in their soul about heavenly joy and intimacy and oneness. There's hurt in this circle right now. There's pain in this circle. There has been been many tears hmm, shed with those in this circle right now. You've been deeply hurt. And you've even felt some guilt and shame thinking it must have been your fault as well. Those that are standing around this circle, just reach out your hands and even lay your hands on someone. Begin to just, under your breath, pray over them. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in this room to prophesy to your sons and daughters. Like a wind, may you rush in to the souls of your sons and daughters and remove every lie, expose every lie. As you're standing there, if certain memories come up, don't be afraid of the pain that would come with them. That's the Lord bringing something to the surface that's been buried, and it needs to be exposed. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. God, you are a strong tower and you are safe to run to, Lord. Thank you for that, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, we speak against the voice of guilt right now, and we call that down in Jesus' name. God, you are a restoring Father. You come, and you take a pile of ashes, and you make something beautiful out of it. Father, there's even shame in this circle right now from fornication. Forgiving over treasure that really belong to you, an offering unto you, and it was given to man instead. Wow, Lord. Thank you that you take our sins, though they are as scarlet, and make them white as snow. You can take a harlot and transform them into a beautiful chaste bride. And we speak that joy over your children, Lord. We declare, Father God, a holy virginity that comes through the blood of Christ over your sons and daughters right now, that they can stand clean and without guilt and without shame, Father God. We confess, Lord, that you are good and you are more than enough. We need look no further for whom in heaven do we have but the Lord our God who is our strength of our heart and our portion forever. Oh, God, though our heart and flesh would fail us and every other woman and man will fail us, God, you will never fail. And we devote these souls to you. We devote these bodies to you, Lord. May these bodies be set apart for holy living and chaste living as an offering to the one true bridegroom. Lord, we speak that over your sons and daughters. Thank you, Lord. God, we declare a holy matrimony in this circle. For from this day forward, we will never classify ourselves as single. Yeah. Yes, Lord. 
you have betrothed us to the Holy One of Israel, Father. We are loved. We are kept. We are dressed in wedding white in your presence, Lord. The joy that you have the Father, you have given to us. And we rejoice, Lord. Thank you, God, that you have swept us, our feet, off of this world and into a chamber that's pure white. Oh, God, thank you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Have a seat. Have a seat. Oh, wow, that was fun. That was so good. You know, you blessed saints, I, please do this. Journal what the Lord did in you tonight. If you don't have a journal, go get one. Get some paper. Get your phone. Write it down. So when you go home tonight, I want you to write down what the Holy Spirit said to you and how that wind came and touched you and refreshed you and cleansed you and gave you an eyes for a future tonight. Write that down, will you? Amen. Amen. We definitely want to pray over some marriages tonight because it's, it's a different dynamic spiritually what has to take place when you're dealing with marriages. Um, when marriages, especially when we've been going through battles and difficulties for a long time, there's, a, there's almost like a numbness that takes place in your heart. It's almost like the love you have for your spouse is something at best intellectual. I know, yes, I know I love them. But the emotional part, and I'm not trying to say love is emotional because it's... it's Love is not about what you feel. It's, it's a decision. It's an act. Okay? It is. However, body, soul, and spirit, we're trying beings. Emotions are part of that. And when our emotions are locked up and we're not sensing um, an affection with that choice of love, some, there's a reason why. I know people that are married that go, yeah, I love them, but quite honestly, they're more like a brother or sister to me. And you're in this room tonight. We haven't had sex, and I can't remember how long. That's what you're thinking right now. You're going, I can't even actually remember the last time we were intimate in that way. That's probably why we sleep in different rooms. Jesus has a joy for you. He has a joy. He wants you to experience the bliss of oneness. It's incredible. It's a gift, and it comes by grace. You don't have to work for it. As your brother in Christ, in the name of the Lord, I desire that you have that tonight. I wish I could give it to you personally, but God will. It's incredible. For me, it's like after 30 years of marriage, I haven't seen my wife all day because I've been doing something for the Lord, she's been doing the Lord, and I looked at her when I walked in the office like, oh my gosh, I've missed you so much. You know? For some of you might be going, that is so corny. <laughs> that is just so ridiculously pathetic, Dave. Really? You want to hear something fantastic? I don't care what you think. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I run up kissing her and give her a little tweak and a pinch and all that stuff all the time around my kids, and it's like, whatever, <laughs> deal with it, you know, because it's like this incredible joy of bliss, of oneness that's just there. I'm going, Lord, that's what we're, that's not. The, the, something special, that's supposed to be normal the way that it's supposed to be. If you don't have that tonight, I got good news for you. The Lord wants to restore what the locusts have taken away. He wants to give that back to you, you know? But, but here's the thing. Oh, 
This is why we don't do it. You ready? We're afraid. See, even as I'm saying that right now, part of you is you're, you're wrestling. You're going, that sounds really good. And, and, I, and I want to take a step forward and take a stand for that and open my hands and receive that. But the other part of me, I'm scared to death to let my hope get up just to be crushed again. Ladies, I'm talking to you. Right? I'm scared to death to have my heart crushed again. Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Do you believe that God takes dead things and makes them alive? How many times can he do that? Over and over and over and over again. He can look into a valley of dry bones and go, just speak life, you know? And so if you're here tonight, you're going, I'm taking a stand for marriage. Now, you might go, but what about my spouse? What about your spouse? Who are you married to? What's the answer? Thank you. You were listening earlier. Good. You're married to Jesus. It doesn't matter what your spouse thinks or what. It doesn't. Because God can touch them. It, all it takes is one spiritual superhero in the relationship that will take a stand for the glory of God. Just one. And watch what God will do. It might get worse before it gets better. I'm going to be real with you. It might. But that's just because there's some termites that have to be worked out of the walls of your home. That's okay. God will be with you in the midst of that. Fear not, little flock. Right? But if you take a stand, the Lord will stand with you. If you will take a stand and go ask for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That's just, that's, I declare that. One person does that, and all of a sudden, I mean, if God can change Pharaoh's heart, hello, right? He can change anybody's heart. So stop with your doubting. Stop with the excuses and just go, I'm looking at one thing, one thing, and that's leaving. I'm leaving my life, my will, my desires, my bitter roots, excuses of the past, and I'm leaving that all behind. It doesn't exist anymore. And I'm going to stay in the presence of a holy God and say, God, this is all about you. And, and, and when you have that, I promise you, the Lord will show up because he's never lied. Amen? He's never lied. So if you're here tonight and you want that healing, you're going, I'm not, I'm not asking for it. I'm taking it. Right? I'm receiving it. I'm grabbing hold of it tonight. I, I'm not going to go to prayer with maybe something will happen. I'm going tonight. I am declaring that the Spirit of God is going to come in and do a renewing work in my marriage beginning with my own heart tonight. And if that's your heart and you want prayer, come on. Come on up front. Come on. We're going to do the same thing. I want you to make a circle around here. If one of your spouse wants to go forward and the other one doesn't, then go by yourself. That's okay. There's no judgment. This is more about your marriage to Jesus than it is even your earthly spouse. Honor the Lord right now. Now, some of the marriages that prayed over the circle earlier, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to stand up behind this circle. And we're going to do something a little different. Let me get in the middle here. All right, so... I want to give an opportunity for anyone in this circle that wants to declare something in their marriage, what God is about to do through prayer. And I'm going to give you the opportunity, um, land the plane, just declare what it is, not a story behind it. And I don't want you to talk about your spouse, I want to talk about you, but I take it you're first. <laughs> yes. um, I just feel it in my bones. I feel it in my house. I feel it. <laughs> it's coming. And my husband's going to get saved. Yeah. And the whole house is coming. Yeah. And my children. I feel it. I declare that. And um, 
I, I declare that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We agree. We agree. Who's next? Who's next? I declare restoration, love, honesty. I declare wholeness. I declare oneness. I declare direct transfer of spirituality from one to another. I declare our connection. And I declare the life of our unborn child. Amen. 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 Who's next? Um, I declare a uh, clean slate like the first day me and my wife set eyes on each other. Clean slate from today. No bad memories of what's gone. What's gone we can do nothing about, but we can do, God can do, you know, the future. So we, I'm declaring that God's taking over the future of my marriage from this moment right now. Amen. Lord, you agree with that? Amen. Praise the Lord. I declare that our marriage is Christ-centered. Lord Jesus, we surrender it all to you, Father, that the love and submissive will be in our marriage, Lord, and I see it happening throughout this week. Amen. 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 Ah, yeah. I do not declare a restoration of anything. What I do declare is that God is going to bring us to something new that we've never had before. He's going to bring us to a new oneness, a new depth to self, a new depth of love for each other and for him that we've never had before. I thank you in advance, God. Amen. 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 I declare a restoration and a purification of Pilar and my heart founded in Jesus and the love of the Father. Amen. 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 George. Yeah, I declare that uh, I'm leaving and I'm cleaving. And, uh, you know, you can uh, be in the same house and yet not have any connection with one another. So I just declare a new connection yeah. within our family. Amen. 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 And I declare tonight, too, a clean state. And I declare that, you know, the both of us will just die to self. And I declare oneness. And I declare that we're going to restore to our marriage everything the enemy has stolen. Yeah. And I declare that Amen. it's going to be a marriage of um, complete love and forgiveness. And I declare that we're both going to look at each other with the eyes of Jesus and only the eyes of Jesus. And that Jesus is going to be the center. Amen. We agree. We agree. I declare salvation for my husband. And I declare he is very soon here in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Yes, Al. I think somebody behind me said something. Yeah. I declare that God is going to get all the glory for the restoration of my marriage. Yeah. Amen. 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 We agree. Yeah, John. I declare that forgetting those things that are behind, I'm going to press forward to the high calling of Christ Jesus, and that, that my focus is going to be not on my wife, but it's going to be on Jesus. And taking the, the, the plank out of my eye and, and working on myself to be Christ to my wife. Amen. 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 There's somebody back here. Yes. I declare that any strongholds that are over me or over my wife will be revealed to us that they will be broken from this day forward and that our love will be renewed like when the day we got married. Amen. Amen. I declare for now, um, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We agree. We agree. Yes, Patty. Um, I declare that God is going to heal my heart. Um, that the past and the old is gone and it's all new. Um, Lord, I declare that you're going to restore my marriage. That I'm going to die to my will. And it's all you, Jesus. It's all you. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm not going to let go until you bless me. <laughs> Amen. 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 Wow, yes. Yes. I want to 
a giraffe. I want a giraffe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I declare God is my husband. I declare that um, I'm letting go of the past and um, I declare oneness with my husband and a stronger marriage and that uh, Jesus is going to be the center of our household. Amen. And uh, I love you, Lord. Amen. 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 We could keep going, but I think there's something the Lord wants us to do. Now, there's some of you are... Uh, are here without your spouse. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and just lift up your hands like so as a, just a sign of surrender if you're here without your spouse, all right? If you're here with your spouse, I want you to turn, holding both their hands, I want you to look in their eyes, all right? So if you're single, just close your eyes and lift your hands up. Just continue to look in their eyes. For see, for some of you, that's the longest. <laughs> that's the longest you've looked in your spouse's eyes in a long time. See, it can be a little uncomfortable to be face to face. This is what the Lord wants with you in your own heart. He wants to be face to face with you right now. That's the intimacy that your Jesus wants with you. He always wants your eyes looking into his eyes. Nothing between you. <laughs> Looking into your spouse's eyes, I want you to repeat these words softly and tenderly. Looking in the eyes of your spouse, I want you to say that I love you. I want you to say that I'm committed to you. Please forgive me for every time I've hurt you, for every lie I've ever told you. You are the greatest gift on this earth that God has ever given me. And with you tonight, I declare a new beginning. Our sins have been washed away. With you tonight, I pray that God would restore a new passion in us for each other. And I welcome the love of God to remove all of our fears. And I pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Now give him a big kiss. Why don't you guys go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> well, we're just getting started. The Lord has done some really amazing things here tonight, yeah. for real, some amazing things here tonight. Yeah, praise God, yeah, amen, amen.
Yeah. Hmm. I want to encourage you. If you're married here tonight, I want you to consummate what took place. Now, what do I mean by that? We're adults here, are we not? Okay. I want you to leave here when we're finished. We're about to finish here, close up in just a few minutes. And I want you to leave. <laughs> Seriously. I want you to leave. I'm talking to the single folks. I mean, excuse me, the married folks. Yeah. <laughs> False prophet. Yeah. I'm speaking, of course. Come on, guys, grow up, will you? Of course, I'm speaking to you married folks, and I, I don't want you to spend a bunch of time talking to people here. I want you to, like, leave, all right? Now, if you have a babysitter at home and, and the kids are there, then go up and have a cup of coffee somewhere and just talk. Just look in each other's eyes and spend some time, all right? Not about the past, about the future. Remember that. You're not going to talk about the past. You're talking about the future, I want you to start to share some of your dreams together. This is a dream I have, you know? And I, as the listener, I don't want you to critique or say, well, I'm not sure that works out with my dream. No, no, no. Listen to their dream and engage with them and enjoy what they're sharing with you, right? Just talk. Just talk. Just spend some time. You might say, you know what, we're going to go to the beach and take a late walk on the beach tonight. We're just going to spend some time. We're just going to go walk and talk, you know. Um, so whether it's sitting out, don't go something, do something goofy like, well, let's go see a movie Spider-Man's playing. I mean, come on. <laughs> Intimacy, right? <laughs> so go do that. And listen closely. Some of you, this whole thing where you looked in each other's eyes, that was a little freaky for you because it was uncomfortable because there's so much hurt and pain and fear inside of you. It was difficult. I, I get it, and I commend you for doing it. I really do, because it took faith to do what you did. It was a big thing that you did. Amen. Amen. <laughs> big deal. It's a big deal. But that step of faith where you went beyond what you felt to what you believed, boy, that's a sermon, right? That's just the first of many to come in this new chapter that you've begun tonight, all right? For some of you, you haven't been physically intimate in a long time, Okay? And I'm saying, step out in faith. Go home, be intimate together. You know, it's not about intercourse. That's only symbolic of something much deeper within the soul, right? But step out in faith and physically be intimate together. There's someone here I know that's sleeping in different rooms. I got that word from the Lord when we started this whole thing. You're sleeping in different rooms. It's been that way for years, okay? It's time to stop that. It's time to stop that. The Lord doesn't want that any longer. You're not, you're not friends. You're spouses. Okay? You're not roommates. And God wants you to step out. It might be awkward. It might not be perfect. But God wants you to step out in that symbolic act of oneness. Tonight, if your spouse is not here and you're one of those, you know what? Then you go home them tonight, you look them in the eyes, and you repeat some of the things that you said out loud tonight when your hands are raised and your eyes are closed. Go home them tonight and just look them in the eyes and say those things. I love you. Forgive me. I'm sorry that I've loved me more than loving you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just say it. Even to the point where tears come out, just say it. And then be intimate with your spouse, if they're ready for that, you know. Just press in to the greater joys that God has for us in oneness. This is his will for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Oh, Father, thank you so much for your holy presence in this place tonight. And God, your promise, you tell us that wherever we sit our foot, you'll prosper us. Lord, we only want to put our foot where you tell us we can stand. And Lord, we want to stand in a holy household where your spirit dwells and moves and darkness has no place and fear and bitterness and judgment have no place. 
So we want to thank you, God, for the miraculous, the healing tonight, the, the oneness that you bring by your spirit. Father, we ask that you would protect every soul in this room that's taken a stand for you tonight. Father, we speak continued healing over the marriages in our church, Lord, over the vision and wounds and fears of intimacy over our singles in this church. Lord, may we represent you, God, as a kingdom marriage. Lord, you tell us that we are already one in you. So we don't have to chase for intimacy or oneness. We just have to receive what's already ours in the kingdom. And we receive that tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen.